Welcome back to another episode of Not Again With Me, yours truly, Danny Acosta. And today, we have the wonderful, the beautiful, the breathtaking, the heart weaver of Lid. We have Haiti Ariago with us. Haiti, how are you today? I'm excited. I'm happy. Awesome, awesome. Dude, it's so exciting to have you here with us because we've actually been um, in, a, in a strand of Disability Pride Month. And one of the disabilities that we haven't really talked about has actually been mental health disabilities. And so we're really excited. Today, we're going to be covering that we're also going to be talking about Haiti's service in church she's an amazing singer and if we get lucky she might sing us a song oh, and, uh, <laughs> and we're also going to be talking about the amazing venture she is an entrepreneur she's an amazing independent woman and it's called Heidi Haiti's business so we we'll right back guys and uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about that so we'll see you really soon so how are you today how you feeling I'm excited, but I'm nervous at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't worry. We haven't lost the patient yet, so you'll be fine. Uh, <laughs> dude, I'm so excited to have you here. By the way, guys, for those of you that don't know, Haiti has been a long, long time friend. I think we've known each other for like almost eight, seven, eight years, right? Yeah, a while. Something like that, yeah. yeah. Since she was a little teenager. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, um, no. <laughs> and as of the recording of this video, um, she just had a birthday, dude. So happy birthday. Thank you. Thank Woo! you. Awesome, awesome. And guys, uh, so today we're going to get to know Haiti a little bit better, and then we'll move on to our other segments. But uh, Haiti, tell us a little bit about where are you from? Well, I was born here in the U.S., but my parents are from Guatemala. What part of Guatemala? So my dad is from Serchi San Marcos, and my mom is from the capital. Oh, nice. Yes. Okay. Have you ever been out there? Um, not to Serchi San Marcos, but I have been to the capital in a few places in Guate, yeah. Wow, nice. And by the way, why don't you leave a like, guys, if you guys are also from Guatemala yes. and uh, rep it <laughs> Zenin over here. <laughs> I think it's really, really cool to have somebody from Central America. We also yeah. had a couple last week that were also uh, from Central America. So it's been really cool to have a thread of different people and a variety yeah. of diverse uh, youth yeah, on our show. So, um, But uh, tell us a little bit also about your educational background. What do you do for work? Where do you go to school? So forth. So um, I was actually um, just a few months ago an assistant manager at Market Basket. And currently I am working as a receptionist clerk in the OBGYN department at the clinic that I work at. And I am a small business owner as well. And currently a part-time <laughs> student going into full-time soon. Woo, dude, yeah. crushing it. That's so <laughs> inspirational. And oh my gosh, that's really, really cool. And I'm glad that you're also not just going to school, but you're also working, you're serving, you're doing all these things and yeah. you're starting your own business, which is an amazing, amazing thing to be able to see. I, I still remember uh, seeing you before all of these things were happening yeah. to see you grow into this place. It's, it's been a really, really big blessing. Yeah. And um, we've been talking a lot about disabilities, Haiti. So why don't you tell us a little bit about some of the mental health uh, kind of disabilities that you've faced or struggled with in your life so i did face um a time period where i had anxiety and mm -hmm. it was actually really bad um where i would have panic attacks and i wouldn't you know be able to function in my daily life um it would affect mm, my school um my school life at work and my personal life um but thankfully um i don't suffer with anxiety anymore um because mm -hmm. i over I overcame it, but yeah. at the moment, <laughs> um, then they faced another battle, and um, I'm conquering it. I'm getting through it, but I do. Um, I have also suffered with minor depression, and I'm going through it. I, I, I'm just you know, going through the motions, and I'm trying to defeat it. Yeah, no, absolutely. Thank you for sharing that, Haiti. Yeah. I think it's really powerful when we're open about it, right? And I believe yeah. that there's a lot of people that are going to be watching today mm -hmm. that are probably going through some form of depression or anxiety. And yeah. I love what you said, you overcame it. So if anybody's watching right now, you're struggling or being challenged with anxiety, yeah. I believe Haiti's an amazing testimony to uh, being able to say, I overcame it. And, and look yes. at that word in the past. I already overcame it. I'm not trying to, I already did, right? Yes, yep. And um, what, so tell us a little bit about when you first found out about um, the diagnosis of anxiety. How old were you and, and what was that like? So that was actually in my first year of high school. That was my freshman year. Hmm. And it was devastating because um, it, had, it had happened that my little cousin had passed away. And I think that triggered something. And, and from there, it was just really horrible. And like I said, it was consuming me in my everyday life. But um, 
But no, I got through it. But currently at the moment, um, like I said, with the minor depression, um, it was kind of heartbreaking for me to like find out. And it took me a mm. while to actually find out that I was going through depression because like I actually labeled it as myself as like, maybe I'm just lazy. I'm going mm. like um, lazy or just like my usual tiredness because, you know, since I work a lot and a lot of different things, I was like, maybe I'm just tired from my occasional burnouts. But then I started to realize then it presented as like, um, like mood changes and I was very irritated mm. easily and it was more serious, but, but yeah, no, I, that's when I began to realize more on, um, more further in that I was actually going through depression. Well, going back to anxiety, Haiti, uh, yeah. what are some of the challenges that you face while being a high school student and being ch uh, challenged with anxiety? Oh, it was a lot. It was a lot because wh while having that anxiety um, during high school, it's like high school is a time for you to socialize, to have fun and to try new activities, have hobbies because you're so young. But because of that, it really like set me into a a place of isolation where I did not want to do anything. I didn't even want to get out of my room. It, it was just mm. so much based on fear. And like I said, panic attacks that I wasn't functionable. I couldn't do assignments at school. Somehow mm. I managed though. I kept all wow. A's in high school, which is something that I want people to know. It's not that, um, that I'm perfect, but it's that, you know, through effort and through perseverance and putting your faith um, in God that you can really do it. Amen. I, I love that, dude. And, and I, I really see um, how perseverance plays a huge role. As you know, when I share my testimony process, perseverance and purpose, yeah. I believe perseverance is a really strong cornerstone, everybody. I, I know that a lot of people that are watching our show right now actually do deal with different forms of depression or anxiety. A lot of them are trying to redefine anxiety in their lives. A lot of people feel like I'm going to be on medication for the rest of my life or I'm probably going to have a therapist for the rest of my life because of what I'm going through. Mm -hmm. And so um, did you ever receive any like uh, experience any bullying because of the anxiety you said any what bullying B bullying yeah mm, i wouldn't say bullying but i got a lot of judgment on mm. people being like why don't you want to hang out why don't you you know want to spend time with me like you're you're just in your own space and you never consider like you know socializing it was more of that than mm. um any bullying mm-hmm Wow, that's that's really powerful, dude. And um, what are some of the misconceptions that people have about anxiety that looking back, you're like, yeah, people used to say that about me and it was really wrong, whether it's about you or or just anxiety in general. That it was irrational, like the reason. Well, like I said, at the time, I actually never told anybody that I had anxiety. So like I was mm. just presenting the symptoms. Like I said, I didn't go out. And I didn't do as much stuff, you know, in terms of work um, and taking um, my responsibilities and actually completing with my responsibilities. Like I said, the misconception that they had was that I was lazy, that I was just I didn't want to do it just because I didn't want to. Huh. I like that. Um, Haiti, a lot of people that do struggle with anxiety and depression, um, a lot of them deal with what's called paralysis yeah. of the analysis, yeah. right? So you become paralyzed. And often I hear people, especially when there's a combination of anxiety and depression, mm -hmm. um, a lot of times people are like, why are you even depressed? You're not even yeah. going through anything. Mm -hmm. And then I, I remember asking somebody, why are you depressed? And they said, I don't know. A lot of people don't understand that that's actually the answer. Yeah. They don't know. Mm -hmm. It just it just happens, right? It kind of like comes over you and then you're like, oh my gosh, like why? Yeah. And and, and then we kind of get in our heads and we're like, why, why? And we go really, really deep, right? Yeah. Um, but I love what you said. You said, I overcame anxiety. So specifically yes. with anxiety, if there are high school students watching right now and maybe in particular some young girls that are watching, what would be your advice for those young girls that are struggling with anxiety but are also high school students? My advice to the young people who do suffer with anxiety or any form of um, mental health struggles is that never stop praying. Never, ever stop praying. Because I just want you to know that although you might feel alone, that Jesus is by your side throughout all of this and he will never leave your side. Mm -hmm. Another piece of advice is have worship sessions or any type of um, intimacy with the Lord, whether it be reading his word or worshiping, you can find peace in him. Like really, I'm telling you from experience that in that moment where I felt like it was bad, my anxiety was bad to the point where I felt like I was dying with these panic attacks. Like that's how bad it, it feels. But mm. when you surround yourself with the word of God 
And with the worship, um, you really do find peace in him. And another thing is have Christ-centered friendships. That is so important. Have oh, yeah. <laughs> friendships that, you know, follow Jesus and love Christ because they're there to help you, not judge you. And they will be there to pray for you and with you. Absolutely. I, I love that, Haiti. I think it's really important to be surrounded by youth or, or just people, maybe your age group. I would even say um, not just the same sex, but sometimes even opposite sex um, relationships help help a lot because uh, we need people to lift us up when we're down. We need people to yeah. hold us accountable, right? Yeah. But sometimes we also need people to pray for us. Yes. We need people to reach out and be like, hey, like, hey, dude, how are you? How are you doing this week? What's going on? Like, sometimes we don't need help. We just need someone to listen. Yeah. Sometimes we just need exactly. someone to talk to, right? Mm -hmm. It's not like I need advice today. Sometimes I just need someone to say like, hey, I'm here today, to man. You out. Yeah. Right? Like we're friends and I'm still alive. Like <laughs> I'm here. So yes. just so you know, you know, like, mm -hmm. which, which is really cool. I think it's really important for uh, people to socialize. And if you are dealing with anxiety or depression, I want you to know like, dude, uh, go make friends. Go get out there. Go connect with people. Uh, just make sure, like Haiti said, right? Make it a Christ-centered kind of family or surrounding or a team. Haiti, I often talk about people having a team. For example, if I have a client, because I'm a social worker, and um, my client might come in and they refuse to see a therapist. They refuse to go to their counselor at school and so forth. Well, what I end up telling them is like, look, think of life like a boxing match. Each opponent or each player has their own corner, right? And so if you have your corner... When you go into the boxing ring, you're going against life. You're, you're battling it out. You're, you're throwing the punches and blah, blah, blah. But at the end of each round, you have to come back to your corner. So the question is, who's in your team? Who's in your corner? Yeah. You have to have a corner. For example, it, I'm usually a mentor or a social worker. So I might be in your corner. I might be in your team, but I'm not the whole team, mm -hmm. right? And so who were people looking back in your life that you can point out and be like, yeah, those were like... Um, very principal people that I could go to or that I could rely on that when I was going through it, I could reach out to them. There were a few girls at my church around the same age as me. And what made them different from others um, was that they, they were there to hear me out. You know, like you said, sometimes it's not about like telling me what to do or give me advice, which is, yeah, that's okay. But sometimes mm -hmm. you just need that moment of like someone hearing you out. And there were um, these friendships that I have that that they were there to hear me out. And, yeah. and like I was able to express myself and pour out everything that I had um, within me, any emotion or thought. And they just, they were there to console me, which is amazing. Yeah, no, that, that is amazing. And mm -hmm. uh, having that group of girls in your church is always a good thing, right? I mean, they're people that they share similar values, shimmer, similar morals, yeah. right? They also have similar uh, characteristics and qualities, yes. but they're also open to praying for you, right? Yeah. And I know that there's a lot of people right now that are watching that may not necessarily relate to having a faith or praying or stuff like that, which is which is awesome. But I want to encourage you guys, give it a shot. Try it out. I met yeah. way too many people that um, that are dealing with cancer. And a lot of times when there is nothing else to do, a lot of doctors end up saying, you know what? All there is left to do is pray. And medically speaking, and even articles have shown that there's something about prayer that does bring peace to people's lives, yeah. which is really awesome. And it's a really, yeah. really interesting thing. And um, moving on to the depression piece, Haiti, tell us a little bit about that. Like, what has your experience with depression looked like? Well, there are a few experiences where, like I said, at the beginning, I just labeled it as laziness. I was like, well, maybe I'm just being lazy because I have a lot of um, responsibilities. Maybe I'm just tired and burned out. But like I said, it began with like, like once I was already going through that for a few months, I reflected, I, you know, I took a moment to just pray and just mm -hmm. ask, God. I was like, where am I right now? Why am I feeling like this? And then I realized, I was like, oh, wow, this is more serious than I thought. And um, there are a lot of struggles. Like one example being like my room, my room became a disaster. Like it literally looked like a, we call it landfill, <laughs> yes, right? Like yeah. wasteland. <laughs> it, yeah, it was bad. I couldn't even see the floor. And wow. I'm like, yeah, that's how bad the depression got. Yeah. And I was like, this is, yeah, like I said, this is serious. And like I said, um, with these challenges that come, um, 
the only thing that you can do is pray and have faith in God that He is there with you and persevere through it because it took me without, you know, I didn't wait for the day to be like, oh, I'm motivated. I feel like I'm going to mm. clean my room because I'm happy and I'm excited and I have that energy. No, I had the discipline. Uh, I disciplined myself. I learned through it, um, through my depression, that it takes discipline um, mm. to get up and do things and take care of your responsibilities despite what you're feeling. Not that your feelings don't matter and they're not valid. Your feelings are absolutely valid and they do matter, but you have to get through it. And in order to get through it, you have to take care of your responsibilities and what you have to do despite what you feel. Oh my goodness. Wow. I couldn't have said it any better, Haiti. Honestly, like that it's it's just so you guys know, like I said earlier, like I've known Haiti for so long. And to see her talk the way she does, it's like <laughs> I'm talking to a full grown woman, guys. Like this was a girl that I was like literally helping grow in the faith and stuff like that, like teaching her scripture. We'd have one on ones. And now yeah. to see you like just flourish into the amazing woman that you are and overcoming mm -hmm. not just anxiety as you've already overcome, but also working on overcoming depression and working on discipline. That's such an amazing thing. And and I want to let people know know out there like often depression isn't the thing like it, it's not like people are lazy right it's it's not like oh mm -hmm. like I, they don't clean the room because they're lazy it's not about that you have to keep in mind if a person doesn't doesn't brush their teeth they're probably not taking care of their hygiene maybe they're not eating or maybe they're overeating mm -hmm. i mean there's just so many complex factors yeah. that come in and play a role but those are all symptoms they're not the problem the yeah. problem wasn't laziness to begin with mm -hmm. but there's something going on internally that paralyzes you yeah. that makes you feel terrible like getting out of bed and cleaning your room isn't even worth it sometimes for somebody that's going through depression yeah. um and Haiti, why don't you tell us a little bit about if if there are parents right now watching of young girls that um are going through depression what would be your advice for parents that have children that are struggling right now can i say both in english and in spanish yeah absolutely okay so uh firstly in english so you know a lot of times, like I said, um, there's this misconception that it's based on laziness, the reason why they don't, you know, why they're um, not doing things and taking care of their responsibilities, whether it be at home or any family responsibilities, you know. Um, just know that we as youth, we go through stuff. And like also, you know, what if there is there might not even be a cause as to why. Um, we got into or this depression or anxiety, but all that matters is that um, you as parents are there to support your child, not with judging them, but with simply hearing them out. That's the most important thing. Some parents forget to hear them out. Instead, they um, scold their kids or sometimes they um, they judge their kids because they, you know, again, another misconception is like, why do you feel like that if there's no reason? We might not have a reason. You just have to be there to understand us and help us out. Um, and mm -hmm. so in Spanish, I would say, um, para que los padres sepan que algunas veces los niños que um, batallan con la salud mental puede hacer que la, la ansiedad o la depresión um, no, no le regañen a los niños. Por favor, estén ahí para ellos porque... Um, uno, posiblemente ellos pueden tener razón porque se sienten así o que sea que no pueden no tienen razón porque se sienten así y es está bien es totalmente bien pero lo importante como padres es de que están ahí para escucharlos porque un error que hacemos los padres when I'm not a parent but los padres hacen es de que ellos le regañan a los hijos porque le dicen que son araganes o que no quieren hacer nada um, mm -hmm. pero no es eso es que algunas veces literalmente no tenemos la capacidad y lo que más nos ayuda como jóvenes es que alguien nos anime y que está ahí para escucharnos o padres por favor apoyen a sus hijos durante um, cualquier batalla que ellos tienen bien dicho Heidi me gusta mucho lo que estás compartiendo porque um, yo tuve un cliente esta semana y este no voy a decir nombres ¿verdad? Yeah. por confidencialidad pero esta chica en particular tiene una aplicación donde marca cada día que no se ha cortado verdad y algo que me sorprendió la mamá me llamó preocupada me dice Dani encontré esa aplicación y fíjate que ya lleva 22 días mi hija yo ni sabía etcétera etcétera de esta aplicación uh -huh. yo le dije pero recuérdese algo 22 días sin cortarse es para celebrar. Oh, yeah. Porque sí. ahorita en esta conversión, tal vez pudiéramos estar hablando, hace 22 días mi hija murió. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Y una cosa que yo creo que nuestra cultura latina también, yo motivaría que entiendan, sí. la oración funciona. Sí. Y es 
parte del de sistema de ayuda que tenemos. No es el único mm. recurso que tenemos, pero es parte. Y es una parte principal, una parte muy importante. Entonces, si tú estás batallando con salud mental, estás batallando con cualquier otra cosa, eh, por favor, mándanos un mensaje. Yo tengo muchos recursos aquí en, en el, la ciudad de Len, pero también te puedo mandar recursos donde sea que tú te encuentres para que recibas ayuda con tu salud mental. Hay muchas aplicaciones, hay muchas plataformas. Mu muchos son gratuitos, o sea, muchos son gratis. Hay otros son, que son para familias de bajos recursos, pero no hay excusas. Recuérdate, es tu hija, es tu hijo. No le puedes poner un precio a la vida. Así que con eso dicho, ahorita regresamos y vamos a estar hablando sobre el servicio que Heidi tiene en su iglesia. Ahorita regresamos. Y ahora con los cantos, hermana Heidi. Put me on the spot. <laughs> no, uh, so guys, just so you guys know, uh, Heidi is actually a worship singer. She's an amazing singer. She has a beautiful voice. And guys, she's single. No, uh, but you better watch out because uh, you got to go through me before you go to her. Um, yeah, so <laughs> she has a lot, a lot of people filtering all of you guys out because uh, she has a very special heart and she's such a beautiful sister in Christ. Um, so Thank Heidi, you. why don't you tell us a little bit about what church do you go to and what do you do at your church? So I am currently attending Iglesia de Dios Casa del Padre. At the moment, I am just in the worship ministry. Um, I was um, a while back, not a while back, but just a few months back, a teacher for the kids ministry and in the danza group. Mm, the dance team? Yes, the dance nice. team. Nice. Mm -hmm. Okay. So right now your, your main focus has been with, with worship, right? Yes, worship. Oh, and I am a youth leader as well for my cerula. For your cell group. Yes. Nice. Awesome. Okay. And uh, how long have you been leading worship? Oh, leading worship, um, I think almost, wow, three, three years. Three years. And how about a cell group leader? Cell group leader? Oh, a while. Maybe like five, five to six years. Five to six years. Wow. And by the way, guys, if you guys ever want to uh, hear uh, Haiti lead worship, or you guys are interested <laughs> in going to her, her yeah. cell group for Bible study or anything like that, or maybe you're just looking for prayer. Uh, we're going to yes. leave all the details down below so that you guys can reach out to her and yes. other things that we'll be talking about in today's podcast because it's going to be really special. We have so much coming up, guys. Um, but Haiti, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, how do you come to Jesus? How, what is your testimony? So um, I grew up in a Christian household, you could say, because my mom would always bring me to church and I would always go ever since I was little. But what really got me closer to God was actually the worship ministry, um, me being in the band. And mm. it started off with me just being there just because, you know, um, my cousin was there and I just had that, you know, reason to go see her and to just try something out because I like to sing. I really love to sing. But <laughs> when, I would, um, <laughs> when I would go to the altar and I actually had those moments of worship, I, I was like, wait, this is more than just singing. This is actually like feeling the presence of God and... Mm and worshiping Him and honoring Him through my voice, through me singing. And so that's when I actually began to get that relationship with God is through the worship ministry and through singing. Hmm. Yeah. That, that's powerful. I, I like that. And, um, you know, I, I think a lot of people shy away from going to church or from uh, having faith, right, in God. And I mm -hmm. think it's really important, as you were saying earlier, when you were struggling with, like, anxiety and even with depression, how yeah. prayer has played a powerful role. Yes, now, definitely. but with, with that said, um, how does how does having anxiety and, and or having had anxiety and then now dealing with depression, how does that play a factor when you are in church? Do you ever find it, like, um, affecting you while you're at service? Like, does it ever distract you from being present or anything like that? So uh, with the anxiety back then, mm -hmm. it, it wouldn't even allow me to go to church. That's how bad it got. But oh. when I would go to church, I remember I would go on Tuesday nights for prayer. And it, was, it started off with just me like quietly mumbling to myself in prayer just there. Because I was too embarrassed to express myself. Because when you're going through that really harsh, um, dark pit, um, you just feel like, you know, you don't want to, you know, scare people away hmm. but then it came to a point where i was like i came to a point where i was praying i was actually like crying out loud like <laughs> like I, I look crazy but i was like you know what god is hearing my prayer and god always hears your prayers and mm -hmm. that's what had affected me at church was just the way i prayed to god i was like you know what i shouldn't care what people think when i'm praying or the way i express myself because this is about me and god my relationship with god um i'm not here um, going to church for anybody else you know 
Oh, yeah. And with the depression, um, the way it would affect me, I guess, today, um, there was just moments of um, lack of motivation where I would tell myself, be like, well, what's the reason why I should go to church? Like, what's really keeping me, um, what is keeping me from going? You know, what what is the reason why I want to go to church? And again, it's like holding on to that purpose that I know that God has, not only for me, but I know for the life of many youth that there's so many youth out here that have many talents, whether it be with singing or with serving, they can be an usher, multimedia, you know, having that understanding of technology you know that's what helped me during my depression is <laughs> having that stability in the worship ministry is just having that you know that feeling of i do have a promise from god and i have a purpose mm. here at church and knowing that you have a purpose not only at church but you know in your life um that's what has helped me even though I, it was affecting me at church i was overcoming it with wow. the things yeah no, that, that's really good, Haiti. I think it's really, really cool that while you're connected, while, right, while you still engage or, or you stay engaged in different serving um, at the church, I think it's really important to also help people understand when you're connected to a church, think of it like, um, like an outlet in a room. You know that if you put your finger in there, there's power in there. But in order for you to feel that power or in order for you to get power out of there, you have to connect something in there, right? And so the best way to know whether or not the, the church has power is to stay connected. You got to stay connected to the place. It might be down the street from your house. It might be a church that friends or family has invited you to go to. But I encourage all of you guys that are watching, go to church, stay connected to a church. Um, Haiti, what about a Bible verse that really stands out to you that's probably helped you go through depression? Oh, a Bible verse to help me through depression. Or even anxiety. Mm -hmm. There's so many. I don't know quote by quote, but it's the one where it says um, that the peace um, that surpasses all understanding mm. um, brings yep. so much joy. And there's another verse that says, like, just like it, it made me feel like free in a sense where it mentioned, like, we are like an eagle that soars out his its wings just out of freedom, just having that liberty. I really yeah. like that verse. Cause no, I like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Yep. Because it just, um, yeah, I just wanted to say like, yeah, it, it really <laughs> helped me because I was like, I just imagined myself in that perspective. I was like, I am the eagle where like through all of these challenges, like I'm like, well, I'm flying and I'm soaring and I'm free from all of this. Yeah. That's... Fly, Haiti, fly. <laughs> <laughs> fly, little bird. <laughs> no, that, that's cool, dude. Yeah. I, I like that. And, and you know what? There's a lot of verses in scripture that really anchor us down in our faith. And it lets us know that even if the storms come by, yes. um, we'll, be, we'll be steadfast, the Bible says. We'll remain strong. We'll persevere, right? And it seems like perseverance has really been a threat throughout this conversation. Yeah. It helps us persevere in different ways. And, um... Haiti, would you mind or would you feel comfortable talking about purity? Purity, yeah. Yeah? Oh my yes. gosh. I'm excited for this. Okay, yes. so <laughs> for those of you that don't know, um, if you've been living under a rock, Patrick style, we have been living in a culture where it seems like if, if you're 14, you haven't had sex yet, it's like you're, you're a bad person. Right. And by the way, if you have, I don't want to put you in shame. I'm not here to embarrass you. I'm not here to make you feel guilty or bad or anything like that. But what I am here to tell you is that don't follow what culture tells you. Culture is not, um, well, first of all, it's not God's word for your life. It's so immoral. And it, it shows you things that are not really meant for you. Yeah. And so I know that's very controversial. I know that's one of those hot topics that we face in, 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 in culture today. But that's exactly my point. Why is it that people guarding their virginity or their purity, why does that have to be such a controversial thing? Why is that yeah. seen as such a bad thing? I remember I was in a social work class one time. And I told them, oh, yeah, you guys should read my book, this and that and the other. And this student was like, well, it's too preachy. And I'm like, what do you mean? It's not preachy at all. It's like literally all romantic poetry. Yeah. Well, you encourage youth to, to, to guard their purity. I'm like, look, just because I encourage youth to guard their purity doesn't mean it's a religious thing. There's plenty of people yeah. that are atheists, that are agnostic, that, are, that practice different forms of religion, um, or that don't practice a religion at all, that believe that guarding your purity is such an important thing. And I am very privileged to know that Haiti is an amazing example that it is possible. Haiti, why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Do you ever get like comments like, girl, you should have been already done it? <laughs> or like, like um, what, what has that been like? Or do you find like more guys are probably attracted to you because of the fact that you've been able to guard your purity so long? Yeah, so I mean, it's a lot. So just... 
Um, <laughs> so there's a lot of points that I can oh, yeah. give at the moment. Yep. But um, there are temptations that have come into my life. And I'm not going to lie. I have failed. But I have, you know, because us as humans have that flesh um, within us that, you know, we suffer with temptations. We suffer with, you know, craving um, stuff that, you know, we're not supposed to yet like mm -hmm. and i don't want people to think that sex is bad you don't know it's no it isn't bad it's a gift from god but it's a gift from god to be held for marriage it's like mm -hmm. and what i told some of my friends i was like you know as a gift it's something special right you're gonna save it for a special day you're gonna save it for mm -hmm. somebody special so why is sex different than that no it's a gift from god and you can't just you know give it to anybody or you can't just you know it's something like that it's similar to any other gift right and um like i said um i'm human i'm human well wow. yes. <laughs> and I... at least that we know of. <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> so far that's what we know <laughs> yes no i am human i promise yes. <laughs> and i have um i have battled with temptations and I slipped up not in the way where I have had um, sexual intimacy, but um, things that could have led to that. And mm. um, my pieces of advice is if there is anybody or anything that is keeping, like trying to provoke you into potentially like leading to that point where they do um, want to sleep with you, um, I recommend to flee, um, to, to leave because like I said, we are just incapable as human beings to to control uh, our fleshly desires. We can. We have self-control. That's another thing, too, that I learned is that we do have self-control. Like, I've learned that about myself is that, yes, I, while I was going through the temptations, I was like, well, I have self-control. And mm. I didn't allow things to lead to that point. But, you know, it also depends on who you're with, right? Because... If they don't want to cooperate with you, if they don't have that same mentality as you, it, it's not good for you. It's not good for you because as much self-control um, that you you might have and you believe you have, you know, it's just better in general to avoid temptations, to avoid... Well, you can't avoid temptations, like I said, because we're humans. But mm -hmm. to avoid situations that can lead to temptations and to lead anything further than that. But again, it's like... I learned that purity is the most amazing gift that you can have because um, waiting for that special someone um, in your life that I know is going to be God sent, um, it's just something to look forward to because, you know, um, just having that same uh, individual, your partner that has the same mentality as you, morals as you, being Christ-centered um, and having respect for you because mm. when a person has respect for you, that is more attractive than anything. Right. Because like, having that simple respect of your boundaries and understanding your boundaries, it's, it's the most amazing thing, right? You oh, don't yeah. want to be with somebody that pushes your physical boundaries or, mm. or any type of boundaries because, you know, like I said, um, temptations will come. But if any individual is trying to push your boundaries, you should know that it's not going to be good for any of you, for both of you. No, you're right, Haiti. And, and often I hear a lot of guys, um, and even girls, right? I, I've heard it's happened to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> where girls might tell me like, Danny, we're going to get married anyways. And I'm like, mm. oh, I know that's straight up stated. Um, yep. <laughs> you know, but like, it, but it happens, no. right? We hear those comments like, oh, you know, you're going to get married anyways, or no. I love you. Or like, well, then why did you lead me this far if we're not gonna even going to do anything? Like, yeah. there's so many things that people out there will tell you. And and yeah. a lot of youth even call, I, I remember being in high school and I even saw a lot of guys and a lot of guys still do this. Like, oh, virgin, virgin. Like, uh, yeah. yeah, I'm glad I'm a virgin, buddy. Yeah. I'm mm -hmm. glad I'm not like sleeping around like you are. <laughs> like. Yeah. I don't care if you call me a virgin. Yeah. That's actually a compliment. That's a good thing. Yes. Um, and so, and Haiti, why don't we wrap up this part of the session? Um, yeah. Why don't you tell us what would be a worship song that has been in your heart this season of your life? Oh, this season of my life. I was just listening to a song called Hermoso Momento. Because hmm. um, in, in English, it's translated as um, Beautiful Moment. Do you know by who? Uh, what's her name? I do not know her name. Okay. Uh, yeah. But um We'll find it later. It's yes, all good. <laughs> we'll find it. <laughs> and I feel like just that song um allowed me to be in the presence of God. And it's just describing how the beautiful moment that we have with God, that we don't um we don't need to depend on anybody else um to make us feel loved and to feel um loved. You know, it's only God that is well, God 
and other people that are there supporting you, but God is really there for you in his presence. Wow. I love that. Hey, thank you so much for sharing that. And if you guys are interested in finding out what song that is, or if you already know what the name of the song and the yeah. artist is, why don't you let us know in the comments down below? Um, Haiti, thank you so much for sharing about yeah. the purity thing. I, I really think yeah. that's one of the things that really impact our culture today. Mm -hmm. And if you guys are somebody that it's like, I, I still have my purity, but like, I'm, I'm really struggling and I'm in a relationship and my, my boyfriend's telling me that if I really love him, then I have to do this yeah. thing. Uh, take Haiti's word and, and take yeah. God's word with you and, yeah. and know that it is possible to say no. Yes. know that it is possible to flee a relationship that doesn't belong to you it's not yours and why would god put you in a relationship and marry you to somebody that doesn't even honor your boundaries exactly. outside of marriage right yeah. and i believe as as haiti said sex is a beautiful thing guys god made sex but he made it for the context of marriage once it's outside of that yeah. it tears apart families friends relationships people and so with that yeah. said guys we're going to go into our next session and we're going to be talking about uh haiti's business because it's an amazing venture that she's gotten into it's been yes. flourishing in amazing and beautiful way so we'll be right back Woo! all right guys so haiti's business haiti tell us a little bit about what is haiti's business and uh what what do you guys do Haiti's business is a self-made business, um, which I created where I sell crochet and knitted items. And I am trying to include more art pieces, more <laughs> art creativity, whether it be embroidery or um, portraits, all, all types of arts. Nice. That's yes. really, really cool. And do you guys have a mission statement? A mission statement. Mm -hmm. Yes. Like mission statement, like in other words... So, for example, right, right like Coca-Cola might be like drink and joy. McDonald's, I'm loving it. Burger mm. King, have it your way. We are not sponsored by any of these. <laughs> okay, well, I had a mission statement and I'm trying to, you know, create one right now. Okay. Because I made this when I was little. Ooh. I was, it is so cringy. I'm just going to be honest. It's so cringy. It was like Haiti's the, Haiti the ladies um, business. Oh, got I love you, it. Got you, something like that. Okay. And I'm like, oh no, <laughs> not the rhyming. <laughs> no, I, yeah. Well, I'm a poet, so I love it that it rhymes. So. Yeah. Well, yeah, but um, soon I'll have another, another. What is it you said? Mission statement. A mission statement. Yeah. And by the way, guys, if you guys have any ideas and yeah. want to put them out there for for Haiti, why don't you let us know in the comments? Yes, I would yeah. appreciate it. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about um, how do you start like crocheting? How do you get into the knitting business? Like, what got you into knitting before you even started a business? So it all started in middle school. I was in sixth grade, so I was 11 years old. Um, also, I have some pieces up here so you guys can see. Um, oh, yeah. And we'll so, jump into that right in a bit. Yep. Yes. <laughs> so I, in middle school, I was only 11 years old. And I remember being in the knitting club because I, um, I was very shy in middle school. I did not like to talk. And the other clubs that they had at school was very, like, outgoing, expressive. So I was like, mm. I'm going to just go here. Um, and it it was horrible. It was really uh, horrible because the uh, the teachers and instructors that were the instructors that were there they were so impatient. They were like, uh, "We're gonna leave you here, and you can try to learn on your own." Hmm. One day the teacher was like, "Oh, you can take your yarn and needles home," and I was so excited. I was like, "Finally!" Ooh. And that same day I took the needles and yarn home. I learned how to knit. Wow! Yeah. <laughs> oh, I was like, awesome. I was like, yes, I did it. <laughs> And then, okay. from, and then just started from there. And then I was very, I was feeling creative. I was like, wow, this is so cool. Like I made my first square and mm. I was like, you know what? I can make a hat from this. And the first thing I ever made was a hat. Um, and then it just developed from there. And then I would just began creating different stuff, watching YouTube. YouTube was my main platform of, mm. um, different ideas and how tutorials and how to um, knit. And then later on, cause I, that, I still wasn't introduced to crochet yet. Yeah. Um, so I was knitting different stuff, like hats, scars, all of that. And then I was introduced to crochet, maybe like actually just two, three years ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I feel like that came from me being like, well, I'm tired of knitting, so let's try something different. And then I was like, wait, crochet is actually like way more fun for me now. Cause it's like way more flexible. Mm. Yeah, and so yeah, that's how it started. And so you have a black belt in crocheting and, uh, and knitting. <laughs> a black belt. Sen sensei Haiti. <laughs> ten years ago. That was ten years ago. Wow. Oh so. my. And uh, how how long ago did you start Haiti's business? Okay, so Haiti's business. Um, okay, so like I said, I started when I was little, right. and I began to sell my stuff like when I was thirteen. Wow. Thirteen oh years my old. 
Yeah, mm-hmm. I was like, I was like, let's see who wants to buy my stuff. And I was little, and the things that I made were kind of like eh, not well done. Um, but yeah, I sold it to like my dad's friends um, and family, and they were very supportive. They were like, Haiti, like keep going, you got this. And so I was like, yeah. And then. Um, well, going into high school, I think it was my freshman year. So now I'm 14. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna take this more seriously because people are, are, are looking at this and are like, Haiti, like you can sell this stuff. You have to put in work, more work and effort and, and you'll be able to sell this to anybody. And so I mm-hmm. um, started off in freshman year of high school. And when I was 14, that's when I developed Haiti's business. Um, truly, like I started. Um, so seven years ago. Wow, oh seven years ago. Yeah, yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, even you were surprised. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> no, because I feel old because I just Dude, turned you're twenty-one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. you're, you're not even old. Dude. You <laughs> just turned twenty-one. What are you yeah, talking about? Yeah, you're right. About? You're right. I'm still young. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And uh, well, dude. So, and, um, seven years. So ago. I know you have some of your popular items here, right? Yes. Why don't you show us a little bit about that and and tell us a little bit about it? Okay, so um, like I said, I'm actually gonna um, start off with my knitting. Um, first, so this is the knitted sweater that um, I began with, and um, it's like a, a raspberry stitch, and so it was. It's a baby sweater. This is um, mm. one of not this exact item is the most popular, but baby clothes are popular now because everyone's having babies, so oh, they yeah. want to buy baby clothes. So I'm like <laughs> COVID, <"You know>? babies. <laughs> COVID babies, COVID babies, <laughs> and so yeah, that's one of my knitted items. And now this is crochet. Um, this little teddy bear um, is one of the most popular items. Oh, it I looks s- like me. Yeah. <laughs> it looks yeah. like you. I guess it is popular. Yes. <laughs> and a lot of people, when I post, like, um, behind the scenes of making the teddy bear, this one, um, or um, just, like, the packaging videos for this item, yeah. they love it. They I, I get a lot of likes with this teddy bear. So I'm like, okay, mm. well, no, this is popular. And now to all the anime lovers, the people Woo! who love anime. <laughs> These are just two of my um, um, most popular items um, for anime, I guess you could say. So if nobody, if you don't, I don't, sorry, I'm like stuttering because I'm like too excited. <laughs> so um, for those who watch One Piece, this is Luffy. And I know that all the anime lovers love Luffy. So here he is. And then. <laughs> The most popular anime character that I think, you know, everyone knows about is Pikachu. So here's Pikachu. Nice. Yeah. And then, you know, another item, I feel like the kids love this. I already have a package here. Um, is the Minion. Everyone loves this one. Hmm. Yeah, because I, I posted a... It's uh, like a cousin that I have in <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so those are just a few items that I have that, you know, a lot of people love. Mm-hmm. And with the bear, um, what colors do you make it in? The bear, I can make it any color. I, I do custom orders, and that's one thing that I want people to know is that I don't have, like, my shop is not just based on what I make and you buy it, whatever. No, it's like, if you guys have any ideas of what um, what stuff that you guys would want to buy, you can let me know and I can make anything custom. And for those of, uh, for the people that are now watching but they're listening on the podcast, yeah. how big is the, the teddy bear? Oh, the teddy bear? Um, the one that I currently have right now is very tiny. It's like the size of my hand. Mm. It's the size of my hand, but I can make it um, whatever size, like I said, custom made to what people want. And, and you also do like different kind of fibers, right? Like it's not just like a like a regular schmo yarn that you find at like Dollar Tree. It's also like oh. you use different kind of like super fluffy ones and oh, more yeah. thinner ones. Yeah, I, I use different ones. I use a lot of different types of yarns. Most of them is acrylic. Um, acrylic yarn some of them is wool some of them is fluffy i use very chunky yarn too i'm like i'm exploring with different fibers yeah Hmm. and and with the autumn season coming up and fall and everything like that i know the the oranges and the the maroons and all the colors the golds and the yellows come out what are typically like um or what are some things that you have in mind for this upcoming season i love the fall season i i mean that's my favorite season i'm so excited (laughs) So yeah. for the colors, um, I'm just thinking about like fall theme colors and especially since it's like that temperature or weather where it's not too cold or not too warm. It's like right in between. Um, like I use the more wool um, mm-hmm. yarn and I use the softer yarn because in that fall season, you want to be bundled up. You want to be comfortable <laughs> and warm oh, yeah. and cozy. So I use that type of yarn. And there's this... Um, other type of yarn, I'm not sure, because some people name it different, but it's like the velvet yarn. Okay. Velvet, I think. Yeah, it's like so soft. It's very soft, and I tend to use those type of materials for the fall season. You know those, uh, what are those pillows called? Squishamellows, squashamellows? S- 
One Wish, of those ice squishmallows, something like that. Squishmallow. Okay. I, I know what you're talking. About I love that. how soft that is. Yes. And I remember um, mm -hmm. feeling some of your products. It's it feels that soft. Sometimes even softer. I'm like, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. this is like really high quality stuff. And yeah. and by the way, um, when I launched my book last year, guys, for the book launch party, the gala that we had, mm -hmm. uh, Haiti was gracious enough to give me one of the roses that she made. And one of the things that I really liked about it, Haiti, was not not only does it keep its form, which I still have, not only does it keep its form, but there's not like wires poking out everywhere and like some of them are sharp and like cutting you up. It's really professionally made. She uses really high quality fibers for all the things that she made. She puts a lot of passion, a lot of heart into it, as you guys can see. And I love um, the, the vision behind it, which I believe it's really bringing a lot of warmth and closeness to people's lives. And being able to just share a lot of her creativity, uh, we've also been able to collaborate a lot together and we've been able to go to a lot of like arts and craft fairs and stuff like that and i know yeah. that she's going to be in more yeah. um and so what are some of the what are some of the things that you struggle with sometimes when working with clients for example uh considering right like the depression piece does that ever take a, a toll on you when you are creating or when you are running your business um i would say a little bit not really because i don't want like I've learned at the at the beginning, yes, it did affect me a lot because I was like, you know, I la I lost that motivation where I took a like a small break from my business. I was like, I don't want to do this because I don't have the energy. I was really burned out and tired. But then um, I began to like really actually like dedicate and persevere through. And I was like, no, like this business is gonna grow and I have to do it. And that's when I began making reels and that takes a lot of effort and energy. Mm -hmm. Like that requires a lot. And so, yeah, no, through the depression, I was like, you know what? Um, the, the main thing that I have to do is have an audience because I need to be, I need to be, you know, happy and I, well, I don't want to say that. Well, I don't want to miss word anything, but I want I want to be happy and I want people to see my products, you know, mm -hmm. I want to present them and I need to be in the best, um, you know, form that I can be so that people can see yeah. my products. Yeah, you need to be at your best, right? Mm -hmm. um, what is the weirdest uh, order you've ever had somebody ask for? Oh, no, I thought about this. The weirdest order. Okay. <laughs> um, no, this is the weirdest product that I've made. You don't be really weird if a guy calls you and is like, hey, I like this girl. I'm going to send you a picture. Can you make her face for me? <laughs> and I'm going to no. give it to her. <laughs> that would be, yeah, no, be that, so that, is, that would be weird. Yes. But, no. but yeah, what's the weirdest order you've ever had? Oh, that is weird. <laughs> <laughs> so um, oh, nobody ordered it, but I made it myself. Okay. You know the packaging um, spaghetti? It's like foam. It's like styrofoam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. that. So I, hmm. I knitted a... Like a stress ball, you would say, or a heating pad. And I put the packaging spaghetti inside of it, huh. by, which, by the way, catches on fire. But yeah. <laughs> you found out the hard way. Yes. <laughs> and so somebody bought it from me. Oh, and, wow. Yep. And, and I, this was the f one of the few things that I made when I was little. So I was, like I said, 12, 13. I don't know. And so I was not aware of it. And the guy was like, oh, like, can I use this as a heating pad? And I was like, and I was like, yeah, I think so. And I don't remember or recall, but I think it did catch on. No, it didn't. I almost caught on fire, but it didn't. Oh my god! Yeah, that's just one of the weirdest things I've ever made. I don't know why I would put spaghetti styrofoam packaging inside of a thing, <laughs> but yeah. And what's the biggest thing you ever made? The biggest thing I've made, like in terms of size. Yep. Ah, uh, what was the biggest thing I've made? A blanket. Ooh. Oh, that must have been so soft. Yeah. Wow. I, no, I think, yeah, it was soft. Yeah, because I used different t-shirts. It was actually an art project in high school. Hmm. And it was two times my height, I think. Yeah, but the the way I was able to do it. Well, I mean, you are six foot four, so you know <laughs> that is a lie, guys. Big. I'm four eleven. I'm four eleven. I'm four so, eleven, guys. I'm so oh short. my gosh. <laughs> yeah. No, it was twice my height, and I made it with my arms. Like I, huh. yeah, cause there's knitting with the, with needles and then with your arms. I, I don't know how do you say, it? um, arm, arm knitting. Okay. So yeah, that was the biggest thing I made was a blanket with my arms. What's your favorite part about having your own business? My favorite part is just seeing people's creativity, not only mine, but other people's. Because mm. like I said, I take custom orders and to see how people are like, they're so excited. Cause they're like, can you make this in this specific way? I'm like, yeah. 
and it's a challenge for me and that's another thing i like to be challenged um, i like to push myself because that is how i got here in the first place is by pushing myself because i started off with knitting only and um then i was like well i don't know how to crochet crochet seems very hard mm. but i took yep. this step forward and i was like let me try it and then from there i've developed like this this um the skill to actually know how to make stuff and create different things and from there now i've developed into <laughs> creating my own stuff without having tutorials or patterns or anything like that wow. and it's like um that's my favorite thing is just learning more and it's a learning experience because i'm still learning um that's the fun part about my business is and learning. you're also in the process of teaching right like you're, you just teaching. picked up somebody that you're mentoring and teaching them how to crochet and so forth yes yeah i currently have a student right now and she's very happy to have me as her <laughs> teacher she's oh, like yeah. <laughs> she's like hey like you're helping Awesome. me a lot and i love it yeah she's there yeah she she's she's incredible dude and i think you're an amazing teacher and every time i Thank hear you. from her um she always has really really good positive things to say we won't mention her name for her confidentiality sake but yes. dude she's she's so really really grateful to be with you yes. and how can people reach you what's the best way to for people to reach you if they're really interested in like maybe getting an order or anything like that Yes, yeah, so there are different um, ways you can communicate with me. This is my business card, which has all my social medias. So you can contact me on TikTok, on Facebook, on Instagram, um, through um, each of their communication apps, whether it be Instagram, on DM, Facebook, on Messenger, TikTok, through um, the messages, and WhatsApp. Um, I can say my phone number, right? For the about WhatsApp? It's up to you, yeah. Yeah, okay. So on WhatsApp, um, the phone number is 617-407-2466. And on Snapchat, you can just send me a snap. It's easy as that. Yeah, and we'll have all the information down below as well. And by the way, it's not just for guys to order for their girlfriends, because I know that's typically like yeah. the, the stereotype, like, oh, I'm yeah. going to get my girlfriends. Like, girls, if you guys, if you yeah. girls are out there, let me tell you, if, if I sure. had a girlfriend, mm -hmm. let me tell you right now, <laughs> like, dude, I would want something too. And it doesn't hurt to have something like soft. And um, I'm sure that there's guys that like different things. I know for me, like, I really love Star Wars themed or like yes. Pokemon oriented kind of thing. So yeah. I'm like a sucker for stuff like that. But I'm also romantic at heart, as you know, Haiti. And um, so, girls, if you're out there and you're interested in getting something for your for your partner or anything like that, and guys as well, yes. make sure you guys reach out to Haiti. And again, it's Haiti's business. We'll have all the social media down below. And we'll come right back to wrap up. But Haiti, thank you so much for sharing about oh, your business. Thank you. So we'll be right back. Awesome, guys. It's been a pleasure being with all of you here. And I know it's a it's a dreadful thing to be like, oh, not again with him. Uh, but at least you guys can take the burden off of my shoulders because now we have a beautiful guest with us, guys. And um, Haiti, do you have, um, is there anybody in your life that inspires you? And if they're watching right now, what would be your words to them? I've never told him this, but I'm going to say it. Um, my dad. My dad wow. is the biggest inspiration that What's I his have. Name? Selvin. Selvin. So Selvin, if you're watching, this is for you. Take it away. <laughs> oh, I can't get emotional. I'm trying to hold myself <laughs> together. But my dad is like a big inspiration for me because he is an artist. He is an artist. And growing up to see him, like the way that he would draw and paint and do all these different types of um art projects i was like wow like my dad is so smart my dad is so creative like he's so talented and to see him like it really like helped me and inspired me to do what i'm doing right now because i'm like well now i know where i got my talent from <laughs> and now i see where well, where i got that artistic characteristics from Hmm. so yeah and it's like um to my dad um who's watching like i love you so much and to see you know everything that you have created like it, it was an inspiration to me just seeing you grow up with um making all these different things like um i wouldn't be here if it wasn't to see if it weren't for you and to see everything that mm. that you make and still to this day he's he's an artist he really is he still makes um portraits and stuff does he speak english oh yeah he's bilingual he speaks english nice. and spanish and he's learning italian i don't know why he's so obsessed with the italian culture but he's learning <laughs> italian no that's awesome i yeah. love it probably has something to do with mom but you know <laughs> Okay, and um, and if um, do you want to give any message, any last words to our audience today? Um, yes. So, 
just a few words for those who are watching. Um, don't give up on your hobby or your passion. Maybe it might not be crochet or knitting. Maybe it might be in the art field or whatever it is in the music industry, whatever it is. Just put your faith in God because I would not be here if it wasn't for God. It was not based on my own strength. Um, it was solely on God that really helped me through it. Um, maintain your faith in Jesus um, and God because um, it is the one thing that kept me going and the reason why I'm here today and I grew so much. And like I said, um, just persevere, just persevere and keep praying, never stop praying. Awesome. Thank you, Haiti. Haiti, it's been a pleasure having you. And I hope you continue to weave love into the community. Weave love into your clients or your customers. And weave love into every single product you make. Guys, if you guys are interested in making an order or anything like that, make sure you guys reach out to Haiti's business. Again, the information will be down below. It's been a pleasure having you guys all here. Haiti, you are amazing. You're Thank incredible. You. And you have been a testimony in my life. And I'm so glad Thank that we you. are able to have you here. You're an inspiration. Guys, God bless you all. You so and make much. sure to live by faith and not by sight. God bless you guys. We love Love you guys. Take care. Peace. Bye. <laughs>